Thank you, Sister Kim. And uh, good uh, evening to you, brethren, you stalwart few. It's good to see you. I know not everybody is sick, but a lot of people are. And uh, it, it can be serious. Uh, this is not the original COVID, but it still can be serious. And there's a number uh, that we should keep in prayer. All of them all should be kept in prayer, but especially let us keep uh, those uh, 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 that we know uh, need to be in special prayer uh, before the Lord uh, that all may be well for them. Uh, tonight I'm just going to start right in on the, stud, uh, the prayer meeting uh, presentation. Um, this uh, subject is the message of res reformation and revival. And the opening thought is, it is not enough to believe the theory of the truth. Now, before I go on with the main subject, I want to say that the theory of truth is important. For us to be utterly uh, ignorant of what we believe uh, doctrinally, uh, why we believe it, is a big mistake. It is just a big mistake as those who dwell entirely on the doctrine. Do not think you can move away from this entirely. Otherwise, we will be like a tree that is green and flourishing but doesn't have any deep roots to ground it. We do need to know what we believe and why we believe it. With that said, and, and we teach both, okay? Um, our message is going to move forward uh, with great power and strength because we have both. And we use both appropriately. Uh, the brethren do need to be grounded in the doctrine. One way we're doing this is by providing the opportunity for the new Bible teacher certificate. Those who are impressed to do so, they, they avail themselves of this opportunity for continuing education in the message, and they are moving ahead with a, a, a good grounding in the message. And it's necessary for each one of us to have this. But um, it is a grave mistake for, for all anyone, and, and a anyone who's been in the message more than a, a, f a few years, this specifically applies to you because you will tend to make this mistake over and over again. Uh, for anyone to think that the doctrine will save us. It is not enough to believe the theory of the truth. It is, in fact, utterly useless. It will only convict us in the day of judgment if we know the truth and we are not living the truth. So, along with the, not, the theory of the truth, we have to practice it. And practicing is always harder than uh, theory, okay? It is always much more effort uh, to come into line, to actually do the things that we, we believe. We have many people out there who believe and do nothing. Uh, gradually get a little colder every year, a little farther from the Lord, a little farther from Bashan, and that's the only change in their life every year because they believe and nothing else. So, it is not enough to uh, have a theory of the truth. On the other hand, if we do not ground people in the truth, you will see a flourishing tree that is blown over in a storm because they do not have the, the roots to ground them. We do have to teach these things. Now, one very good way of teaching the message, in fact, probably the best single way of teaching the message is to get people to read the message. <clears throat> If you are still spoon-feeding spoon your uh, new people six months after they have come in and they are not 
uh, availing themselves of the opportunity to study, to read the message for themselves, to watch uh, the, um, the videos on the, on the uh, doctrinal subjects, the charts and so on. If they are not availing themselves, you have people who are um, stony ground people who have no roots and are not about to set themselves up with roots at this point. It is very necessary for every new person to start reading. And so what we do is we get people started with uh, the righteousness of Christ. Uh, it's now bait and switch. We are absolutely uh, committed to living this life and we will have much, much to say about it continuously. But they, as they become interested in the message, they need to read. They need to ground themselves. And we need to give them not the whole TGs. Everybody wants the whole set of TGs and tracks right away. They don't need everything right away and they can't digest everything right away. You give them carefully selected uh, um, and chosen uh, TGs and, and other material. Bound up material too. And what you would do is you will give them opportunity to learn to feed themselves. Now some teachers very wrongly and perversely like to have their new people dependent on them, on their every word. That is a false teacher, brethren. You want your, uh, you want your um, spiritual children, like your actual children, to be able to stand on their own. You want them to be mature and strong in the message, in the Lord. And you want them to be studying on their own. And that means reading the message. So, uh, I wanted to point this out, and I'm not coming back to the subject maybe for a while, but if you, if you want to understand how to be a successful teacher today, you will attract the brethren with uh, Christ lifted up in your life and your words. And then you will ground the brethren by getting them to read and study for themselves. You do this, you will have great success for the Lord. <clears throat> it is not enough to believe the theory of truth. The guests at the marriage feast were inspected by the king. Only those were accepted who had obeyed his requirements and put on the wedding garment. So it is with the guests at the gospel feast. All must pass the scrutiny of the great king, and only those who are received, uh, only those uh, are received who have put on the robe of Christ's righteousness. Now this is not a long, far, far time from now, brethren. We understand our, our day of judgment could happen uh, effectively at any moment. And the day of judgment for the church is coming quickly. And so it is of great um, importance that we get this robe of, of Christ's righteousness on uh, ourselves and all of those that we can possibly influence in this way. Righteousness is right doing, and it is by their deeds that all will be judged. Oh, but I, I had a, a, a strong theory in the, in, in the, a strong belief in the theory of uh, the truth. Sorry, you're not judged by that. You are judged by what you, uh, what, uh, the, uh, the things that you knew, how much of those things you were doing. And the requirement is everything. You are doing everything that you knew to be right at that time. Our characters are revealed by what we do. The works show whether the faith is genuine. Too many people uh, will testify and talk, but will do nothing. Don't worry about the talk, brethren. Watch their life. If you see your uh, new people uh, not uh, living the message, not being on fire, not uh, wanting to push ahead, being cold and um, and indifferent and uh, uh, in a state of, um, of uh, uh, asleep, basically, especially for our older Davidians, and I don't mean age-wise, I mean uh, if you've been a Davidian uh, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, you're one of our older Davidians, 
who will have, uh, uh, who will have a strong tendency toward this sleeping sickness. Uh, and our characters are revealed by what we do, not by what we say. Look at what they're doing. Are they sitting at home in front of the television of the re uh, all their life? Or do they have any, um, any uh, fair sheaves uh, of uh, souls brought in, one for the Lord, to show? They have nothing year after year. Brethren, take that as the answer. They are not among the called and chosen. And it's sad, it's very unfortunate, but there's, we have a lot of dead weight out there. And one of the things about these people is like senescent cells in our body, the zombie Davidians uh, um, badly influence the ones around them. Uh, he's been in the message 30 years. If he could do that, I could do it. I, can, I, I don't have to worry. They drag down the spiritual tone of all those around them. There really does have to come a time when our... Um, our uh, older, and I don't mean age-wise, chronologically-wise, I mean older and years of, of, of um, sleeping and uh, indifference and coldness, uh, our older Davidians uh, come to a choice. They come to a, a juncture in the road where they decide to do the right thing, or they continue on the way they are, in peace until the judgment day. But uh, we, we, for, for the good of the work, by the way, for the health of the overall church, we do have to come to that decision. And we are moving in that direction, brethren. So uh, the works of these brethren will show whether their faith is genuine or not. It is not enough to believe the theory of truth. It is not enough to make a profession of faith in Christ and have our names registered on the church roll. It's not enough even to have a fellowship certificate. Here's my fellowship certificate. Look, I'm in good standing. You, are, you have gone through the necessary exterior things if you have that card, but only God can judge the heart. And the card itself does not say that you are saved. It, does not, it doesn't um, guarantee that at all. Only your own life, only your life will uh, uh, show that uh, in the end. <clears throat> Whatever our profession, it amounts, it amounts to nothing unless Christ is revealed in works of righteousness. Now, this is what is necessary. Uh, this is the key thing, this is the first thing, and this is the last thing. Uh, our... our um, Christ is to be revealed daily and continuously in works of righteousness in our life. And as this is true, we are truly his. As it is not true, he will tell us soon in the day of judgment, I know you not, because we were not doing the works of Christ all this time, brethren. It's a very serious thing. We know and we're going to be judged by the theory of the truth that we know. We're going to be judged by it, all right, but we're going to be judged by whether we are living these things uh, in um, everyday works of righteousness. Okay, what is the purpose of the message? We all know this, and uh, I'm just reviewing this. The chief and only purpose of these doctrines being to prepare a peculiar people to God's own glory and honor, a people to meet the Lord without tasting death or to rise in the special resurrection of Daniel 12. Even from the beginning, Brother Hadith was this, this was inspired truth and those people who were not to uh, meet the Lord directly uh, would meet the Lord uh, as they come up from the special resurrection, which included all of them back then, brethren, but they are all who are faithful are going to be uh, recognized as such in the special resurrection. Now, the purpose, the chief and only purpose of these doctrines is to prepare a peculiar people. It is not to give a, a, a people uh, the lip service, the, uh, the understand, uh, to give them a, um, a little mantra 
about, uh, yes, I believe the shepherd's rod. I believe, I believe. And uh, uh, that's going to get me in. That's not what it is. It's to prepare us, okay? It is to prepare us by showing us the things that we should do, giving us the tools that we need to do this, and encouraging us uh, in the direction we should go. This is the purpose of the message, reformation and revival. And we, we should never have the slightest doubt about it. Anyone ask, what is, your, the, what is the purpose of your message? You need to be able to clearly, quickly, and, and very convincingly tell them what the purpose of our message is. And we can support this from the spirit of prophecy. Sister I has a lot to say on this, the subject of the need for revival and reformation. The purpose of the shepherd's rod is to prepare us for the day of judgment. This is a fact. Now, what that day of judgment is exactly is not so important. You know, for many people, uh, including Brother Hadaf, the day of judgment as effectively was his own last day of life. And this is, uh, 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 in a very real way, our personal day of judgment. If it, if, if, uh, if it comes before uh, the uh, general uh, day of judgment. Now, uh, we also understand, and the message explains in great detail and clarity, uh, that the day of judgment is the day of, uh, described in Ezekiel 9. Uh, and uh, that is something that um, uh, is of great importance because uh, pe while people are thinking, well, you know, I can go on until uh, the end of probation for the world, there is a day of judgment that is coming up soon. And brethren, it is so soon, it could be tonight for us, essentially. Uh, if we pass away tonight, we will be judged up to this day. So uh, it is important that we understand uh, that this message is preparing us for the, uh, the judgment that we are going to go through. Uh, this publication contains only one main subject with a double lesson, namely the 144,000 and a call for reformation. The object in view is to prepare God's people for the impending doom of Ezekiel's prophecy, chapter 9. And God's people are going to be judged, exactly as Sister White explains. It is not a, it is a real, literal judgment that is coming, but brethren, that's nothing new. And we've always faced the judgment. We face the judgment even possibly tonight if we, if it should be, we do not wake up in the morning. So we need to be prepared. That's the real takeaway here. We need to be prepared. We need to be living as if this was our last, last day, last night, last week, last month. Don't worry about a long stretch of tomorrow. It is right now living the life that God has asked us to do, a life of right doing that is gonna count. God wants his people to live a reformed life today. God wants his people to cleanse their hands and purify their hearts. Will it make them unhappy to do this? Now this is a profound thought that Sister White is giving us here. It needs to be listened to carefully and then you need to go away and meditate on this. It's so profound, it's so right, so true. Will it make them unhappy to do this? Will it make anyone unhappy to do what God asked us to do? Never. Will it bring unhappiness into their families are they, if they are kind, patient, and courteous, and forbearing? Will it? Brethren, it will not. It is the very thing to make your families happy, to make you happy too. And this is what we are required to do. This is our religion. This is our reformation. If you are not kind, patient, courteous, and forbearing, um, please don't call yourself a Davidian. Please don't uh, stop calling yourself a Davidian until you change and come up to the standards that uh, the rod has uh, set and the, and the spirit of prophecy has set for us. Far from it, the kindness they manifest toward their families will be reflected upon ourselves. You cannot bring um, 
uh, um, joy and happiness to others. You cannot do good for others without good coming to you in a very real way. This work is the work that should be carried forward in the home. It's a very important work. One of the things that we see in Davidia, because they say there's a, a marked lack of um, true reformation in Davidia, is uh, uh, unreformed families and homes. And we say, how, how, brother, how? Well, do you know uh, Brother Hanuf's uh, discussion of, uh, of the Adventist church if they were retaining the children, what it would have meant in the growth for the church? Well, do you know that applies to us? If we were retaining our children, it would have made tremendous difference today. Why are we not retaining the children? Children are not completely ignorant. Uh, when they look at us, they can tell that we are not living up to everything we profess many times. Perhaps not always, everywhere, everyone, but brother, overall, it's, there's a lot of truth in that. The children have not been exposed to the reformed family life that they should have been. They have been left to uh, ever move closer to the world. And is it a surprise to you then that they end up in the world? Now, instead of having um, um, something to show the Lord for, uh, 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 that you have, uh, you have gone and done his command and you have uh, been faithful and you have brought up these children before the Lord, what do we have? And brethren, I said we, okay? I'm not pointing the finger at you without uh, pointing a uh, finger at myself too. We have not done what we should have done. We did not know how to do it properly. We had the instructions, but our minds were busy on other things. And we did not do the, the simple home reformation and revival uh, that we should have done. We didn't do the uh, life reformation and revival in our own lives that we should have done. And we end up with, um, uh, we ha end up with uh, little to show from, uh, from the, effort, the years of effort that we put into the children and so on. Uh, sometimes we have nothing to show, brethren. It's a very serious charge, and it tells us louder than any amount of talk how good our personal reformation was, and perhaps is. We're not going to accept any, uh, any um, denials on these things. I am guilty. Uh, uh, almost everyone else is guilty. We have fallen short. And uh, to, 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 um, to start doing the right thing, we, uh, just like an alcoholic, have to acknowledge that we have a problem. Okay? Uh, there's a, a famous understanding for working with alcoholics and uh, drug abusers and so on. It's like you have to acknowledge you have a problem first. A lot of these people take years before they will acknowledge that they have what you and everyone else in the world could tell at a glance. They have an alcohol problem. Well, we have a reform problem, brethren. We have a revival problem. We have a coldness problem. We have a problem with people who sit in front of their television, their life, and instead of being on fire for the Lord, instead of looking for every way that they could be doing something for the Lord, they are doing nothing year after year. <clears throat> the kindness they manifest toward their families will be reflected upon themselves, and it will, brethren, in many, many ways. This is the work that should be carried forward in the home. If the members of the family are not prepared to dwell in peace here, they're not prepared to dwell in the family that shall gather around the great white throne. Sin always brings darkness and bondage, but right doing will bring peace and joy. Right doing, righteousness, brethren. If we do this, we will have peace and joy. And this is what the Lord wants us to have. And this is what he insists that we have. And to the extent that we do not have great peace and joy today, more than any other Christian uh, or group, is a testament against us. Uh, it is a 
indictment, a, a constant indictment against us. We talked, but we didn't walk the walk that the Lord has, uh, uh, the truth that he has given us. Uh, this is the very essence of our merit message, right doing. And the right doing will bring peace and holy joy. And if you see people like this, who have this peace and holy joy, you are going to be drawn toward them. You can't help it. I mean, it's, it's our kind of people. It's who we like. You're going to be drawn toward them. Well, that's fine, but it's even better thought to understand that the Laodiceans are going to be drawn toward you. Even Seraphonicians, they're going to be drawn toward you. They're going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to, they, they're going to, want to know how do you get this peace and joy. They like to know. They like some of that themselves. Those who are honest, those who are called, those who are open to the moving of the Holy Spirit, they will come in your direction. Not to lift you up, brethren, but to lift up Christ. That is what we, the, the work that we have been given. What is to be reformed? All things are to be reformed. Back to the original standard. The institution of marriage, of course. First institution uh, may, uh, um, uh, created by God. The Sabbath. Uh, the Sabbath has, uh, needs to be lifted up uh, more fully. Uh, woman's position. Woman lost her position. All that was lost is to be regained in the end. If you don't like that, if you're stuck in the um, uh, 6,000 years of sin, you're making a mistake. You need to be able to move forward with the restitution of all things. Uh, the family is to be restored. Right from the beginning we had Cain killing his brother. And even if we don't kill our brother today, uh, many, many brothers hate each other. Uh, sisters uh, uh, fight and squabble with each other. We have a lot of uh, problems today. All of these things, all of this dysfunctional family th things, we can't get together with each other, we don't like each other, and so on. All that's, that has to be reformed, brother. That is not what it's going to be like in heaven. Vegetarianism, and this is the uh, original Edenic diet uh, in more broadly stated. These things are going to be restored by this message, by our message. Health. Now, physical health, we understand. We have a message of health reform. But um, uh, the mind and the spirit uh, are even more important than the body. And uh, we have a message of mental health reform as well as physical health reform. We must bring the most perfect healthy and wholesome um, mind offering to the Lord. If you have a gnarled and twisted mind over the years, uh, you need to start working on that with the Lord's help because it is our, it's our um, responsibility to present ourselves before the Lord as a whole wholesome offering. You know, the offering in the, in, in the um, um, a mosaic period uh, was to be without blemish. We ourselves, as we present ourselves to the Lord, must be eventually without blemish. And that's the requirement of the Lord. He requires us to come back to that standard. Now, not all, all at once, but you do nothing for years and years about your blemishes, and you think the Lord is going to pass that off? No, it is necessary that we, pres uh, we uh, 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 re uh, work on every defect of character and mind that we have as well as as every physical defect that we can possibly improve with God's help that we be able to present ourselves as the most unblemished offering we can before the Lord. The ministry is something that is being restored as you saw. Uh, this is the ministry uh, and the priesthood that will serve the Lord forever and ever. And it's being restored now uh, to where God intended it to be. Uh, the whole animal kingdom and the, and the natural world itself must be restored. Uh, 
This is something that will uh, become uh, more clear as we go on, but it's a real thing. God is working uh, even from now to uh, begin this uh, uh, work of restoration. And everything else that needs to be restored, brethren, there are other things as well. And the standard is not that hard to understand. Whatever it was that God first created, that's what he wants to bring it back to. And he's using this message and us to bring that back to the Edenic standard. So what is to be reformed? All things. Most importantly, ourselves. There's a tendency for us to run around and look at the motes in other people's eyes. It's a waste of time, brethren, because we have plenty of beams in our own eyes. And uh, whether our beams are the same size as the motes in other people, eyes or not, is not real important. Uh, for, from when it comes to our own um, salvation, the moat that other people might see in our eye, honestly, is a beam because that is big enough to keep us out of the kingdom. Uh, we do need to deal with our beams uh, for our own uh, uh, salvation's sake. The only thing God will accept is right doing. Now, we, I think we all clearly, clearly know it. We're going to emphasize it over and over again. Uh, it is uh, only through right doing, righteous living, that we are going to uh, be accepted uh, by the Lord. The reason why God's people are not more spiritual minded and have no more faith, I have been shown, is because they are narrowed up with selfishness. It is not the abundance of your meetings that God accepts. It is not the numerous prayers, but the right doing, doing the right thing and at the right time. We do have to uh, move away from our childhood. We need to let go of our besetting weaknesses and uh, let's call it uh, what it often is, set sins, besetting sins, brethren. It is time to uh, let go of every weakness, every defect that we know of. If we hold on to things, if we keep doing these things, uh, when we know that we shouldn't be doing it, we are in mortal danger at that point. You are in mortal danger uh, of the judgment. Uh, it is uh, not at all clear that we will have a last minute uh, chance to repent of things as we are dying. Those people who are uh, what we consider in a very serious situation, you know what, in a way, they are highly blessed because they have time to make themselves right with the Lord. And if, uh, for many, there is no such long chance. The Lord knows they would not benefit from it. And it is necessary for us to let go of our continuing sins. Uh, the, some of the sins that are particularly objectionable to the Lord are the ones that come out of our mouth with each other. Over and over, month after month, we keep doing these things. Brethren, if you know it's wrong and you keep doing it, you are not coming to the Lord with these things in the right way. You want to feel the, the, the way the Lord looks at these things, the, the horror as it, that he would look at with, on these sins. The, uh, sin, the utter sinfulness of sins. Well, it's just a little thing. Yes, that one is the one we're talking about. Uh, a very, very sinful behavior. The smallest little things, if they are weakness that we indulge in over and over again, we're going to be um, called on those things. We're going to be judged on those things if they continue. If the mind is free and happy from a consciousness of right doing and a sense of satisfaction in causing happiness to others, it creates a cheerfulness that will react upon the whole system, causing a freer circulation of the blood and toning up the entire body. The blessing of God is a healing power, and those who are abundant in benefiting others will realize that wondrous blessing in both a the wondrous blessing of both heart and life. You have health issues, you have problems, start working to bless other people. The more you do for others, the greater will be your own blessing. Now, the sense of satisfaction caused by, uh, 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 satisfaction in causing happiness to others. 
Now, most of the world causes trouble and pain to others. You see this all over. People minding other people's business. People controlling other people. People actually hurting other people. Shooting other people. Blowing people up and all other wickedness. This is the enemy's ways. Uh, the sense of satisfaction and causing happiness to other people, that's a huge thing, brother. Psychologically, it will boost you, it will create cheerfulness, but there's a deeper uh, 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 blessing to be had from this. God will bless you. It's not, when we say bless, it's real. That thing is something, what, what is involved in being blessed by God is spiritually real. And um, while we can't see, and sometimes we don't understand, it is a real thing. If you have a choice to have a blessing from the Lord or to win the lottery, uh, choose the blessing from the lottery, sorry, from the Lord. It is what is real. It is the real benefit, the longer lasting benefit, the greater benefit by far. Uh, 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 divine blessings are very real and um, if we have health problems, uh, we need to do, uh, we say, Lord, uh, help me, bless me. Uh, 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 I need to be cured, I want to be better. But you have to do your part, and I, I want you to understand, and I want you to know forever and ever now, you have been told by God, in order to receive a blessing, be a blessing to others. Go and help other people. Go and, um, uh, give them happiness, cause them happiness, uh, help them in other ways, whatever way. Maybe you are not strong enough to physically uh, wash their clothes and uh, 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 I, uh, clean their house or this or that, whatever. I'm not, it doesn't have to be that. You might be able to have, have helped them in words of wisdom, in lifting them up, in, in a smile, in listening to them and being a positive, cheerful spirit to them, uh, in, in telling them things they may already know but need to hear again about, the, about uh, reformation and revival. Do these things and you will be blessed in a very real way. If you have health issues of any kind, God wants you to be out there being a blessing to others. If you sit in your house and you pray for a blessing and you don't do anything, God will do nothing. Remember this, uh, lots and lots of people selfishly demanding, uh, requesting blessings from God without doing their part or doing anything on their part. It won't, doesn't work like that, brethren. A good life. Our happiness is dependent upon our living a righteous life. God has called us to live a good life. Each one of us choose to do that. Day by day, choose to be, to live a good life, to serve the Lord. As you do, uh, you will be uh, growing closer to the Lord. You will be changing day by day into the person that he wants you to be. And you'll be a, a blessing, of course, to others. The consciousness of right doing is the best medicine for diseased bodies and minds. The special blessing of God resting upon the receiver is health and strength. A person whose mind is quiet and satisfied in God is in the pathway to health. To have a consciousness that the eyes of the Lord are upon us, that his ears are open to our prayers, is satisfaction indeed. Do what the Lord has asked you to do and his ears are open to your prayers. Do, ignore what he has said and his ears are not open to your prayers, brethren. It, it is something you may not want to hear, but go and live your life in a narrow way for your own benefit and ignore everyone else. Don't do any good. Don't be uh, conscious of right doing because you have not done any right doing. And, and see if the Lord is going to bless you. And this is, we see over and over in the world, lots of people who have chosen to live for themselves only. Uh, and uh, they're all narrowed up in their own selfish interests and desires. Can the Lord really bless them? The Lord cannot bless them and they deteriorate in their health um, uh, um, 
month after month until uh, they fade away. To have a consciousness that the Lord's eyes uh, are upon us and that he is open to our, our prayers is great satisfaction. When we live a, a, a life of right doing, our life, it, we have the satisfaction of knowing it. Now, don't be uh, lifted up in pride and so on. We're not going to do that. But we have this profound satisfaction that I did what I, I, I knew I needed to do today. And tomorrow, with the help of the Lord, I'm going to do the same thing. Live your life like that. And as we live our life like that, we have this special blessing uh, in our health. We will actually receive um, a, a blessing that improves our health, strengthens our body, and will even help us live longer. Godly people who are righteous live longer. It's a, a brand new uh, Brother Trevor research. <laughs> but brethren, it is based on everything that the message in the Spirit of Prophecy says, and I think you all know it's true, too. Sinners talk of the amusements of the world and the pleasures of sin, but when death is staring them in the face, they say nothing in praise of the beautiful life of sin they have led. Not one of them do that at the end. The terrible, dark future is before them, and if they could only know that their names were written in heaven, what a weight would be lifted from their sin-burdened souls. In every condition, under every circumstance, the Christian can say, the path of holiness is a good way. Live a good life. When you come to the end of that life, if that should be, uh, you will also be a blessing to your family. You know, um, even among Davidians, uh, Christians, there's always the concern when someone passes away and they, did, and they were not um, truly in, in the, um, walking in the grace of the Lord. Uh, and, we, you know, you have to wonder, is that person um, going to be saved? Uh, it doesn't do any good if the preacher preaches them into heaven. Uh, the truth is only God knows. Because they did not bring forth fruit to show who they, what was really in their heart. But the situation is different for your family and friends if you have lived a righteous life. If you have lived a life of right doing, uh, there will be much evidence in that. And your family will be comforted. They will know that a very, they will have a certainty in their hearts which way you are going. Yeah, it, you, we do good in our, uh, by living a good life, we do good in our life, and even in our death, we will be uh, encouraging and uplifting uh, our friends and family. This is the, uh, the power of a godly life. A good death. We've talked about this before, brethren. We face these things, not to dwell on them day and night, but we face them to, be un to understand and to have the right view on these things. The Christian who manifests patience and cheerfulness under bereavement and suffering, who meets even death itself with the peace and calmness of an unwavering faith, may accomplish for the gospel more than he could have effective by a long life of faithful labor. This is inspiration. This is not intuitive. This is not what you and I probably would say. But this is what God had Sister White say. He is saying, she is saying through, uh, through inspiration that uh, many people uh, who have been faithful all their life and, and faced death as a faithful, unwavering Christian can be such a blessing to others that they accomplish more at their death than in their life. This is no small thing, brethren. Uh, may have, have it to be your desire that this is how you live your life so that you will have uh, a, a, a righteous death, that you will do in, in death uh, all these things here, that you will be uh, just as successful uh, in um, helping those uh, in your last moments as you have been, uh, uh, or even more so than you've been all your life. This is our standard. That is reformation in our life and even our death. 
Let not the follower of Christ think, when he is no longer able to labor openly and actively for God and his truth that he has no service to render, no reward to secure, Christ's true witnesses are never laid aside. If you have been serving the Lord uh, in, in your um, days of health and strength, he will use you even in sickness and old age. Christ's true witnesses are never laid aside. In health and in sickness, in life and death, God uses them still. This is actually quite a wonderful thing to know. Um, I want you to see it's wonderful. Um, when we come to that river uh, that uh, divides uh, this life uh, from the life to be, uh, we should be like pilgrim in Pilgrim's Progress. We should be joyful. We should uh, have a sense that we have done everything the Lord has called us to do. And in doing everything that he has called us to do, uh, we have a deep satisfaction and peace and joy in knowing that. And we continue all the way to the end because the Lord will use us in health and in sickness, in life and death. He will use us, brethren, if we will allow him. This is our reformation. This is the kind of life that God wants us to lead even until the end. If we therefore fail to take hold of the message, and if we fail to reform as it recommends, then it is not possible to survive the day of the Lord. Now, brethren, we, we know this as Davidians, but we are not living this truth. This is one of those things of the message that we have to act like we really believe. Uh, we have a lot of cold, old Davidians. Uh, we need to have zero uh, cold old Davidians. And you know who some of the most zealous brethren are? Do you know? You know brethren. Brand new brethren who have not had a chance to have their, uh, their, uh, their um, eagerness and their happiness uh, disabused by the older Davidians. These are the people that are zealous. These are the people who are moving forward spiritually. These are the people who are bringing in others. Now, it's very unfortunate that we are in this situation, but it comes from not actually living the Reformed message. And, and it is something that we cannot continue on. It will not take us, uh, it will not take us safely uh, uh, through Ezekiel 9, brethren, uh, to, um, to be in this situation. It's not possible to survive. If you believe anything, believe this. Take this to the Lord. Uh, let the Lord uh, uh, get you stirred up about this. This is something that we, if we're in this situation where we are not uh, reformed, we are cold, uh, we are not doing the things that the Lord has asked us to do, and we know it, uh, if we are in this situation, we should be uh, incredibly uh, concerned. Don't continue any further. It is useless to continue on. It's useless to wait for a more convenient time. Let the Holy Spirit alarm you on this. It's the only thing that's going to save you is to really decide to make a, a, a drastic uh, effort. It will take everything you have and everything the Lord can do to get you out of that cold, old state. But it's, it's the only way you're going to survive uh, the judgment. True reformation requires that we change our habits, theories, and practices about a lot of things, brethren, a lot of things, uh, things that we have never even thought about before. Uh, but as we go through it, we realize, well, you know, um, I, I see this and I see this. Let me declutter my life. Let me simplify my life. I didn't realize I was so involved with the world, so dependent on the world's ideas and so on. So many, many different things that we have to uh, uh, get straightened out. Okay, I'm going to close with this thought. Uh, the essence of all righteousness is loyalty to our Redeemer. This will lead us to do the right because it is right. Because, it is, because right doing is pleasing to God. In the end, 
We should serve God because we love God and we want to obey him. We want to please him. There are those who are here for loaves and fishes. And I don't mean just here, here. I mean they are here as Davidians or Christians for loaves and fishes. Eternal life, brother, that's what I want, eternal life. Well, maybe they want eternal life, but they don't have the right view. They, they want what they want, but they're not willing uh, and interested in, um, in doing this uh, because they love the Lord only. We should do the right thing whether we are going to get uh, our penny in the end or not. We do the right thing because we love the Lord. Yes, we will, the Lord will deal justly with us. Each one of us, he will deal justly. But meanwhile, we should be doing the right thing, living a righteous life, because we know that that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to do it, by the way, because he knows that's the right thing for us. We will be blessed, we will be happy. Our families will be blessed. Our families will be happy. The church will be blessed. The world will be blessed. He's waiting on us to have this determination to do the right thing under all circumstances. Brethren, uh, do not um, delay, do not um, wait for a more convenient time. Uh, make it a decision uh, 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 on your part that you will serve the Lord in everything. You'll put him first, you'll put his requirements first, and as you serve the Lord uh, with all your heart, you will be blessed in ways that you never imagined before. It is true. So um, I uh, hope that that was a blessing to you all. Uh, this is our message, Reformation and Revival, uh, grounded on the Shepherd's Rod message. It's the most powerful message that it's ever come to mankind if we wield it right if we use everything that we have in the right way, starting, of course, with us personally. Thank you. God bless you.